Have you always wanted to air fry your own chicken nuggets on the stovetop? Well, now you can. Welcome back to another Jeff Reviews for you. And as you saw, we are looking at a lid that turns your frying pan into an air fryer. What? That's what I thought. Anyway, enough talking about it. Let's get right into the review. Here is our Air World Crisper. It's actually a lid that you can turn an ordinary pan into a stovetop air fryer. That sounds pretty cool. I did purchase this for right around $70. Let's do a quick unboxing. Here we are unboxed. Of course, you can see we have a grill rack. This is our motor, which is gonna be powering our silicone blade. Of course, you see our directions, our lid, and there's even a temperature gauge on there. This is so cool. Oh, I should show you this. Underneath my lid, I have my hex clad pan because it told me I can turn an ordinary pan into a stovetop air fryer. Let me read through the directions and we're gonna get started. If we were to do a quick measurement, you can see that this lid is around 13 inches across. And of course, the grill rack is just about eight inches across. I've just read through the directions and I'm really sad. I cannot use my hex clad pan because the lid needs to have a pan that's at least 1.75 inches deep and this one is not. So I ended up picking up a new one that I could use with the lid. The lid is able to be used on a pan that is 10, 11, or 12 inches. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash up all the parts that can go in a dishwasher and then we'll start this test. When I unbox this, I noticed an unpleasant smell. So I'm hoping that comes off when I wash it. So in the washer, I'm gonna put the silicone fan blade, I'm gonna put the grill grate, and I'm gonna put the lid. But first I'm gonna take out the temperature gauge and it just really is through this rubber gasket. Now this might be able to be dishwasher safe, but I don't wanna risk it. Of course, you're not able to put the motor in the dishwasher either. We are all washed up and ready to go, and I wanted you to see something. I put the grill rack inside of my pan, and look how small it is. There's at least two inches all the way around, and that's kind of frustrating because I know this is my cooking surface. Nothing's supposed to spill over, so that really limits what I can use in this stovetop air fryer. Now we're gonna go ahead and assemble the motor onto our lid, and you can see that there's some attachment pieces right here that go right here on the top of the lid. So let's put that right in, and then you do a quick twist to lock it into place. Hear that click? Now that the motor's on and snapped into place, we can put our silicone blade in, and that just pops right in, and now it spins around. Of course, I wanna remove it. It's really simple, it just pops in and out. One last step before we're ready to use this, and it's actually just twisting off this top part of the motor and revealing where the batteries go. It takes three AAA batteries. Now that we have our batteries in, we can put our lid back on and snap it right back into place. My opinion, yeah, that was pretty easy to put the batteries in, but I kind of wish at this price point, those would have been rechargeable or have some sort of a rechargeable battery inside. Now to operate this, you just push the orange button. I don't know if you can hear that, but the fan just kicked on. I do want to see what that looks like. Take this off. Can you see that fan spinning right there? Let's turn it off and see. That's pretty cool. So that's supposed to circulate the air inside of our frying pan. A couple more things I want to point out. The directions do tell you to put a piece of foil at the bottom of your pan, and that's really so you don't damage the pan. The idea is you have your grill grate over there and food might drip oil or whatnot off and they don't want you to scorch or burn your pan. So I do have foil here. I was able to fit nine nuggets on this grate and the directions tell me that should take less than 10 minutes to cook these nine nuggets. We are ready to go. Our nuggets are in place. We have our lid on. Two final things. One, there's absolutely no preheating necessary. You just turn your stovetop on, put the pan on, and there you go. Also, the directions tell you to monitor your heat. They recommend either a low or medium heat on your stovetop and never let the temperature gauge get into the red setting. To get us started, I'm gonna turn the fan on. Whoop, it didn't turn on. There it goes. I don't know if you can hear that. Now I'm gonna turn the stovetop on. All right, I'm actually gonna turn this on medium heat and set the timer for nine minutes. I do wanna show you my exact temperature. I put it just there between two and three, although this dial goes all the way up to six and three would be the middle. The directions tell us to experiment with the temperature. And so I wanted to go a little lower with the ability to move up. I do notice that over time when I've been cooking that this burner burns hotter than the other ones. So we've been cooking here for about two minutes and our temperature is not rising very fast. The directions on the chicken nugget bag told me I'm supposed to be cooking these at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So I am gonna turn this up to the full three on the dial to see if that helps. We've been cooking now for just about nine minutes and the temperature of the air fryer, or at least the temperature on the front of the air whirl, 
is reading at right around 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So I have a little bit of temperature to go before I reach that 300. So I'm gonna reset my timer for another nine minutes. I wanted to show you something. You see this stuff right on in here? That's actually bubbles from when I put it through the dishwasher. I guess all the soap didn't rinse out or maybe water and soap got somewhere where it wasn't supposed to be. I sure hope that doesn't drip onto my nuggets. Well, the timer beeped again. So I've had this lid on closed for 18 minutes. I just took it off to put a probe inside one of the nuggets. And you can see on the left here, the 162 degrees Fahrenheit is what that nuggets internal temperature is reading. You're supposed to be done cooking around 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're actually almost done even though my air whirl has not yet reached 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Listen to that, our temperature has now been reached for our nuggets. Let's take them off and check them out. After about 20 minutes, they are perfectly cooked. I do wanna make an observation. I know the directions told us we do not have to preheat this and just roll and go with it, but I will say I'm on my third round of nuggets and the first round took 18 minutes, the second round took nine minutes, and this round right here is looking like it's gonna take nine minutes as well. So even though you're not supposed to have to preheat, working with a preheated pan definitely helps. It doesn't make me feel comfortable seeing that boiling soapy water. I've been using this Air World crisper quite a bit and each time the water that's in between the glass and this plate is just boiling. So I was able to use my rubber wrench here and loosen this up. So now I just wanna take it apart a little bit and clean up the water. It's just made of three parts, the metal washer here and this nut go on the bottom. Of course, the coat goes through the glass entirely. And of course this part screws on the top. I was able to clean this all up. Now I'm gonna put it back together. We're now all reassembled. The water has been dried out from the middle. And at least for me, I'm not gonna be running this through the dishwasher anymore because that was kind of annoying having to take this apart. So I'll probably just do a hand wash only being careful not to get water into the center. So tell me, what are your thoughts of the Air Whirl Crisper? Is this something that you have? Are you considering it? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. I've had some mixed results in the past with french fries, so I'm not putting a whole lot on here. So let's see how they turn out. We are about halfway through and I wanted to give you a side view here of the fries cooking. You can just see them bubbling up and just crisping. It is pretty sweet. And there you have it. We are all done. Don't those look good and crispy. I will say I've air fried a lot of french fries and these ones have come out the best now. That's probably because I didn't put a whole lot on there and the air was allowed to flow around, but in the end, they did a good job. In addition to nuggets and fries, I've also cooked some chicken wings. These took about 30 minutes, which is exactly what the directions told me they should take. After cooking the wings, look at that nasty grease to clean up. In this video, we are looking at the Air World Crisper. It's the lid that turns your frying pan into an air fryer. So what did I think of it? First things first, let's talk about that price point, $60. And on top of that, I had to buy a $25 pan just to use it. I'm invested now $85. Why don't I just go buy an air fryer? Price aside though, does it work? In my opinion, not according to the directions where they say you do not need to preheat. I absolutely saw a benefit with this pan being warm and have been used for a little while. It made things a whole lot quicker. It did a good job cooking food, except when I tried it, I thought the food tasted a little greasier than when I use a typical air fryer. And I'm not sure if that's just because the little space that I have between that grill rack and the pan, it just doesn't let the airflow go through. But in my opinion, it tasted a little greasier. Now, was it good? Yep. Just I don't like it with all that grease. As I was reviewing this product, I did some research and I noticed there's actually two different versions. And the biggest difference is the actual grill rack. So you know what? James White with Freaking Reviews actually reviewed the other version. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link his link down in the description. After a little bit of practice, I was able to get the product to work, but then I gotta think, this is not something that I'll ever really use. I have an air fryer. And then I was thinking, well, maybe there are people that don't have room for an air fryer. And I think those situations, this might be a good product, but for me, not so much. Anyway, if this is something that interests you, I will leave a link down in the description. This is Jeff with Jeff Reviews for you. As always, thanks for stopping by and I hope you have a great day. Now we're going to cook a pizza and the directions actually tell us to microwave our little pizza for a minute and 45 seconds and then place it in the air fryer to cook for six minutes. Here we go. I ended up letting this go a total of 12 minutes because as I've been looking at this, the cheese in the middle wasn't cooking. Now it looks like it's pretty well melted. Plus it's starting to brown around the edges. It's time to take it out. I tell you what I've been most impressed with 
The length of time I've been cooking now over three hours and I have not done a bit of damage to that pan. I was kind of expecting it to be scorched, but it still looks brand new. I really do appreciate that you stayed around for my entire review of the Air Whirl crisper. You know what? Not that long ago, I actually reviewed another air fryer. It's the Amarillo Gazi French Door 360. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link that right up here and I would love it if you would click on this link. And when you do, by the magic of the internet, I'm going to join you at that review. So go ahead, click it. It's safe. I promise.